good. Um, I think what last month was like my first 100 mile month. Um, yeah, my body feels good really so far. No complaints. No like niggles here and there, like it's holding up. Well, feel great. I think right now I'm at a point where I'm like trying to chase more and I need to like settle back down. But I'm doing well trusting my body. When I mean like I'm trying to chase more, not so much like I'm, I'm always, you know, I, I trust the program. I trust what you said like, to the T. I think like for us, what happens is like because of my hectic back and forth schedule between work and South Carolina, I'm finding myself like when I am in New York, like hitting the trails every day that I can. Like I'm trying to get my long runs here in the trails. If there's like a, a, a two, like a sandwich workout or something that you know, like the two to three mile workout, we did the track last week, right? Yeah, that or was the week before. And uh, I was like, oh, I really wish we were just in the trail right now. Like it would just be like oh, so much easier. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I feel I feel great right now. No pain, nothing wrong. That's 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 the most important part. Yeah. Especially as as we're building up, and that's kind of one one of the reasons why I like I have the like the, the ranges is so you can listen to your body. Yeah. So I'm really happy. Like even even what you did like moving like a rest day around, yeah. do that. Like, listen to your body, make those adjustments as necessary. Um, if you can like swap something and then do it the next day when you're feeling better. Um, like let's say you, you swap like the interval day um, and you're actually like refreshed and recovered for it, you're gonna have a much better output from that training session and it's gonna serve you a lot better than if you were just to try to grind through it when you felt like shit. Yeah, I agree. I think I'm trying to make sure that I prioritize that. Like, I, I'd rather live to fight another day than yeah. try to just drag my ass through a workout and then not, I get nothing out of it because my splits are off and I'm just dogging it the entire time. It's not a, yeah. Right now, we're, I'm struggling just trying to find balance between what to do on my runs so depending on where I am. So, like, we talked, Kevin and I, before. It's like, when I'm in South Carolina, there's no elevation. It's all road running and it's it's completely different than up here where you, know, you have the opportunity to go to the trail and do the hills and, and that's like where we're trying to f kind of find a happy balance with the train. Do you have access to a treadmill? Down there? No. No. Yeah. Oh, didn't we talk about getting a treadmill last time? We are, we, we are, we are, yeah we are. We're, uh, yeah. we're revamping a lot of my other gym. And in, in the dimension. Yeah, no we are, we are. We're going to get the, the Nord track the X-22s. Okay, cool. Uh, what questions have, have come up in the last bit that you have for me? When he's in South Carolina, I guess the humidity and like the heat gets to him. I said for the, uh, when he's in South Carolina, get the mileage on the top end more over there since it's flat anyway, versus here, even if we don't hit the top end mileage, we could at least use the trails and get used to here and kick up the intensity a little bit on the trails versus over there it's like the only thing that's hard about it I think you said it was like breathing humidity down there honest. yeah so I was like my body is not acclimated at all like I, I my pacing down there I don't know if you're able to look at it on training peaks is horrendous down there like I I cannot find rhythm in any of my runs down there I feel like I am just like I don't know the humidity is just it's different it's very hard to get used to it is. It is very hard to get used to. Um, but no, Kevin, I, I completely agree uh, with your with your logic there. Like, do when you're on flatter ground, you're going to be moving at a faster pace, and so you're going to cover more mileage in the same amount of time. So use that flatter terrain down in South Carolina and hit the hit the top end of the mileage if uh, again that's feeling good for you on the day. Um, and then when you're here in the, uh, New York, using the trails and the elevation. Because at the end of the day, it's all about time on your feet. Yeah. Right. Uh, and we will we will be shifting at some point to uh, time on your feet versus mileage. Uh, but we're just building up that base right now, yeah. so that's kind of how we're going about that. Uh, and then you also have to remember that heat is a stressor on your body, right? And so it is going to affect your pace. It is going to affect affect your intensity, um, and it is something that we have to account for um, with going through the workout and recovering. Right. Yeah. So um, it should not be the same yeah. up here versus down there. Yes. I, 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 I mean, I've like I've grown up with family in Florida, and, and I've been down south a lot. For some reason, I just like my running down there is just not 
just so, like my pace down there, like a, a 10 minute mile pace is just, I feel like I'm dragging my feet. Yeah. Like the 15 mile run that I did, yeah, this, the long run we did was just, I got through it, but it was just, it, it was pretty much a loop. I did a three mile loop every, and came back to the car, refueled every three miles, and it was a, it was a dog fight. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't, I did it was kind of like almost heartbreaking because I felt like I was like, wow, I should definitely be in a lot better shape. And this 15 miles is just dragging me now every mile. Yeah, you can, you can never say that. Never put those expectations on yourself. Ugh. Like, you feel how you feel on the day. You feel how you feel during the workout. Um, like, you, you can't, like, just expect to, like, be a certain way. Yeah, yeah. I'm also struggling trying to find rhythm too because it's like a, it's my first month of like doing the traveling so it's like I'm you know trying to follow my fueling strategy beforehand and just like trying to figure out like what works for me down there it's still learning but and that's another big thing that you need to keep in mind is travel is a stressor too that you have to recover from right and we, we can't train what we don't recover from so if if the the stress of like the flying and the driving and everything going back and forth continues to accumulate, that's something that we'll need to look at and making sure that you are having those extra recovery hours in your week, um, whether it's like breath work or getting a, a massage or something to like bring you back down out of that um, and, and account and recover from that stress. So would you would you say that you're, when you give us something, are you implying that it, could, it should be done on the trail? Or you're just saying like, hey, it doesn't matter, do whatever kind of running you want, this is what the mileage I want. No. I would, I would love, I would love for it all to be done on the trail because you're going to be racing on the trail. Yeah. Okay. All right. The more time you can spend on the trail, mm -hmm. the better, because you're going to be practicing. Like if, if you got, if you're going downhill, you're practicing your downhill technical run. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get to the last 90 seconds of an interval and you you, you peak the crest, and now you got to go downhill for the last 90 seconds. Well, I don't want you to slow down, so you're going to be practicing your downhill running. Okay. So it's, yeah, I, yeah. I would rather all of your all the runs that you can do on the trail, get them, get them down on the trail for sure. Yeah, all right, that's good, because I'm glad we're on the same wavelength, because there are a lot of runs where I'm like, oh, I really wish I could just do on the trail. Like, like I said, the sandwich workout, like we did that on the track, and I would have loved to do it on the trail. I think the one, I think today or yesterday, is just the two to three with the four by 20 hill sprints. Is that the one? I think so. Yeah, which is actually, which is cool, because we actually just found a trail yesterday that has like a really big fire road, uh, which would be perfect for those sprints with a two mile loop, two and a half mile loop. Awesome. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. You, like, um, and it, again, it doesn't matter too much now. It will really matter later next year once we get closer to the race because we want to get as specific to the race conditions as possible. Um, but honestly, the more, more time you can spend on trail running, the better you're going to get at it. Like, yeah. from a skill perspective. Yeah, no, I'd rather be in trail 100%. Yeah. If, if for whatever reason, like, speed, like, we found out, like, speed was a real issue for you, and we needed to, like, execute some really hard sprints and, like, actually do some track workouts, I would put you on the track. Yeah. And that would be different, right? Yeah, and, and that would be, like, specific, like, okay, we're going 800 meters, we're going to do down. You know, you're going gonna to float 400 meters or whatever it is. Um, that would be very specific to really have a, a good adaptation of your speed. Yeah. I'm, I'm not concerned with pace, right? That's why I don't say have an 8 minute mile pace, have a 7 minute mile pace, whatever. Yeah. It's a 5K pace, a 10K pace, or it's a 7 out of 10 RPE, 8 out of 10 RPE. Okay. Um, or it's going to be, once we get your heart rate zone data, it's going to be zone 4 sprints for this long, zone 5 sprints for this long. and so. We're working at an intensity, not a pace. Because your body, so I want you to remember this. Your body does not understand pace. It understands intensity. Okay. There's a big right. difference. Um, but yeah, I mean, great, great questions. What else? That's pretty much it. I think we're pretty dialed. We were joking before. We're like, every time we have a, a meeting, we always, I always just like forget to do it. So I'm like, we're just so... We want to be easy. We don't want to overcomplicate and make your job harder. We're just like, give us what to do. We'll, we'll do it. And if I break my leg or something happens, then you'll hear from me. Don't, don't feel like you can't reach out. No, if no, have, yeah, yeah. If you have questions on on a workout, if you have questions on like, how could I be feeling? Or if you have questions, like, dude, reach out. All right, sounds good.
Alright, perfect. You got anything else? Nope. Alright, it's good. Alright. Let's go. Cool. Dude, excited. Great seeing you all. Yeah, absolutely. Keep crushing too. it. Don't be afraid to reach out if you got questions. <laughs> no, we're never afraid. We're never afraid. Alright. Alright. How are we man? See you there. Later. We take care. Uh, oh, good. Um, yeah, our coach is freaking badass. Right? He's a He's a, yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Grand Slam, Grand Slam Ultra Marathon runner. Um, so how many runs did he say? He did four? He did it's four for the Grand Slam, but he did two within six weeks. Yeah, that's wild. It's 200 miles. But. Oh, yeah. It's good. He lives right here in New York. So. We're gonna have to figure out a schedule to get out there, do the VO2 max, we'll just pick a day and we're here, drive out That's there. It's gonna be worth the content. Yeah, it'd be good. It'd be good. It'd be funny to see, we'll do like a VO2 max at the beginning and then we'll do it at the end. See like where we're at. I think the data tracking is super interesting. I wish I, you know, I need to, I want to pay more attention to it. That's why I live in the forums. Yeah, Reddit is a, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was a good meeting. A lot of things that we had to square away. All right, so we're here back at Spring Park. Um, you guys saw our meeting with Lance going over, you know, game plans and, and things that we want to do better and things that we need to improve on and things that we need to maybe dial back. Um, and one of the topics we talked about was reorganizing the week and, you know, understanding your body and, and, you know, making sure prioritizing the way that we feel, you know, making sure that if we're doing a workout and we have to, you know, maybe push it a little bit more where, you know, we're changing the schedule a little bit, listening to your body, understanding that, you know, maybe take the day off, take the rest um, to recover to make sure that that next day is 100% effort. Um, so I took the day off yesterday. We are going to do a little bit of a couple loops here. Kevin, what are we doing for loops? Five to 10 total, and we're gonna Five mix in some hill sprints. With a four by 30 second yep. hill sprints. We found a fire trail here, which is a really good place to do all of our hill sprints. Um, there's a bunch of loops, so I'm gonna start this way and basically loop all the way back around, meet Kevin down at the fire lane where he'll do his little loop, and then uh, we'll hit some hill sprints. Body feels good. How you feel? Terrible. Yeah, feel great. Uh, this is actually my first gallon of water all week. I have not been prioritizing my water since I've been back. Um, nutrition, not as good as I want it to be, but body feels great. Gonna get in these, this one loop, hill sprints, and then uh, yeah, see how it goes. Last episode, we talked about finding your groove and creating good habits in your training. I think specifically for me, you know, having a great team around me like Kevin and Lance to, you know, bounce ideas off of, give put my training and the importance of all of the back end work in somebody else's hands, specifically Kevin and Lance, is awesome for me because it really gives me an opportunity to focus on the training in front of me. You know, obviously look ahead of time and know what I am doing and what I do have coming up, but also trusting those guys to listen to me, listen to my body, make accurate changes and you know really prioritize me as an athlete i think there are a lot of great running coaches out there a lot of great strength coaches out there but i think it's really important 
that you find somebody that prioritizes you as the athlete and listens to you, listens to your body, and not just give you something cookie cutter. And I think that's going to be really crucial for me as I prepare for Leadville. line. I picked the hardest line. I know I did. All right, so we just wrapped up almost a three mile loop. Um, like I talked about last episode or the beginning of this episode, this fire road is a great place to do our hill sprints. So every time we come here, we try to build in our hill sprint workout or that part of the work. So we'll exactly explain what we're doing exactly. Um, so we are, well, his program today is five miles to 10 and four by 30 second hill sprints and we are doing it just to train different energy systems um, depending on what he's going to probably face in Leadville this is great work for right now at least we're not we're pretty I think we're pretty far away right what are we at like 48 weeks. 48 weeks so we're just building a good base um, and then when we get time, we're probably going to do less of the hill sprints, maybe just long, longer duration stuff. But um, so far, Lance has been spot on with his programming and uh, he's getting better. So I will see you guys down there. No, no, fuck you, no, fuck you. All right, so just wrapped up the first loop with the hill sprints. Now I need to go back down that way and pop back out to get the last part of the sandwich. Um, yeah. Nothing much to say. Just got to do it. Anybody got water? No, I don't need it. Goodbye. Honestly, by the time we get there, you might get there at the same time. Don't get lost. Someone mentioned in the last video why the work uh why we did the workout that we did on the track and just to explain we are doing different energy systems because we're still quite a bit away from leadville last time that track workout wasn't supposed to be done on the track but due to scheduling issues we flip-flopped the harder trail run workout on the track and we did the easier trail run the next day Someone asked about the 5K pace. How do you get that? And we actually, we didn't go based off of um, the trail run 5K pace. We did it off of his, uh, what he does on flat ground. So that's how we got to that number. And that workout was brutal only because he's not used to doing those type of speeds at this point. And that person was right, as in like that workout was probably way too hard to begin with. But 
Um, that's just kind of how we're doing things right now, only because um, whenever we do workouts on the trail, we go pretty hard. And that one track workout just so happened to be also on the hottest day, so he was really gassed from that. But other than that, he still has some some sort of a residual speed left from the, the amount of running he did prior to even starting his lead build prep. So it shouldn't have been that bad, but we had outside variables affect that. But that's about it. Now we're waiting for him to finish his, uh, his other loop, and then we'll see how he looks after that one. <laughs> All right, so we just wrapped up that workout, that run today. Um, these last two episodes, we've changed up where we're running and I'm very appreciative that we live somewhere where we have this variety of training. Like I said last episode, um, the hill sprints are gonna be crucial. Uh, Kevin and I were talking that Hope's Pass is gonna be a battle. Um, it's gonna be a lot of vertical running, a lot of vertical climbing, and uh, we need to start prioritizing that as much as we can with our, the elevation that we're provided here. Um, we were actually talking about maybe one episode going up to Vermont or New Hampshire and doing a day trip there to train, uh, getting an Airbnb, getting a bunch of guys together to go up there, spend the day. Um, I'd love to do that. We are, uh, we are exactly, how many weeks out are we? I think it's 48. We are 48-ish weeks out. I think. Don't and, quote me on that. All right, don't quote us on that. 48-ish weeks out. Um, and in our call with Lance, we were talking about how, you know, on paper, it doesn't look like it's that far away, but there's a lot of work that we have to continue to put in leading up for the next 48 weeks, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to put the work in every single day. You know, recovery days, prioritizing recovery days, we're prioritizing lifting days, prioritizing these types of workouts, the long runs. There's no day that should go unnoticed or no day that should go, you know, not a non-important day, you know, for the next 48-ish weeks. Um, other than that, got nothing else. We gotta recover. We gotta go home. We gotta eat. Right? You got anything you gotta say? Huh? No. All right. Goodbye. down in South Carolina, enjoying a nice bath, getting recovered. Um, so this entire week of training is a little bit of a deload. Um, running is just back to casual, four to eight miles per day. Long run, five to 10. Um, this entire week has pretty much just been all recovery focused, ice baths every single morning, every single night. Um, like I said, low mileage, low impact lifting, uh, nothing really big. Today's workout, we had a pull day. So we had a little bit of deadlifting, a little bit of power cleaning, and uh, just get a nice bath, coffee, before we, uh, we start the day. Um, this is my first recovery week of this Road to Leadville series. Um, I don't think that it's much needed. My body definitely doesn't hurt, um, or there's nothing that's really been bothering me, but you know, not gonna complain about a little bit of uh, recovery workouts and a little bit of recovery days built in. So we're in here for 15 minutes um, and then uh, we're gonna hop out, eat some food, start the day, get a lift in, get a run in, and uh, keep pushing on. When I was in college, I never enjoyed the ice bath. I actually always pretty much avoided it. And we had to do one every single day after practice. So, funny how things change. Like I said this morning in the ice bath, we have a lower pull day today. Uh, we are supersetting deadlift and power clean. 
Um, we're going to combine the Metcon a little bit in that. We don't have a sandbag today, so it's three rounds of box jumps, kettlebell high pull, echo bike, 14 cal, and then sandbag stress carry. Uh, no run today, so tomorrow we'll film tomorrow's run in the morning. Um, but we're going to tackle this lift. Peyton over here is going to be my spotter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're going to get after it. So uh, let's get to work. Ready? I mentioned that it's a 15 minute AMRAP of supersetting deadlift um, with power cleans. So what I'm gonna do is, because I only have one bar, I don't have a, jet, a, a deadlift jack, I'm going to superset my barbell deadlifts, push it, go a little bit heavier with those, and then superset it with dumbbell power clean. Um, just change it up. Like I said, I only have one bar here, no deadlift jack, it's one person. Peyton's my spotter over there. So uh, gonna make do with what we can. And uh, Peyton's right now blasting all the small things. That's like her favorite song, right? Is that your favorite song? Yeah. All the small things? Yeah. What's your favorite line? Um, gotta get the... No, what's your favorite line from uh, all the small things? Uh, Work. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna start with 315 deadlift and then superset that with the 50 pound dumbbells for the power cleans. 15 minute AMRAP, let's get to work, see what we can do. So pretty much every morning I stop here at Parker's um, and pick up two large bags of ice for the ice bath. Um, a little bit late jump to the ice bath this morning. Uh, kids had homeschooling co-op today so had to get them ready out the door. We have a, a little bit of a back workout um, and then we have a six mile run. So I'm picking up these Righteous Felon Habanero Jerky. Um, down here in South Carolina it was the first time I've ever tried this and uh, I'm excited it's actually from PA which is pretty cool we're good I'm a big beef jerky big beef yeah I'm a big beef jerky guy um, yeah pretty good they have a bunch of flavors so excited to try all those out anyway gotta get gas then we're gonna head back to the house, get a workout in, get this run in. And then, fly back home to New York. All right, so I just wrapped up that workout. Uh, pretty much just a 15 minute AMRAP of uh, rows and pull-ups, supersetting, pretty much just getting it in, getting the work in, uh, and then some light stretching. We have six miles in the mini today for our run and then a 15 minute ice bath. Um, on my flight back to New York leaves 
in a few hours so we gotta bang this run out um tempo is just pretty much just get it done uh time on feet most important thing for this run um, like I said at the beginning of this video, this entire week has pretty much just been a giant deload week of running. And uh, it's definitely much needed. The volume was ramping up really quickly. My body was starting to, you know, get beaten up a little bit. So I'm excited to get after it and uh, hit the ice bath. And then uh, get back to New York, see the team, see the gyms, see the hills, and get after it. So let's go. Six miles. Let's go. Uh, we are here in Iron Vault Scarsdale. Um, first full workout back. Um, it's Tuesday. Took Monday off. Not really anything special on Monday. Um, was uh, all by myself out in the trails. Didn't bring the camera. Didn't film. Felt good to just kind of like go back to square one where we all started and just kind of like doing it all by myself out there. Um, clocking five miles that day. Today we have a sprain ridge run today. Uh, an interval workout, but before we go over there, we have a upper push day. So we have a upper push day. We're starting off with push press, a four by 10 push press, followed by four by 10, a 12, 10, eight, six dumbbell bench press with a small Metcon. We're actually gonna do the Metcon today. I'm excited, so let's get after it. So we just wrapped up that workout. Um, we are here back at Spring Ridge Park for our interval run today. Um, a bunch of people have reached out the last couple of weeks talking about you know different trails to try out that are nearby, a little bit farther away, and we're actually planning a trip to go up to New Hampshire, Vermont area to get more variety of our training in, give you guys more content. Um, so we're working on that, don't worry. Like I said, we're here today. We have a two mile easy run followed by five two minute hills. Uh, with recovery back down, then four by one minute back up, recovery back down, and uh, it's our first combo workout right now of the week. So we're excited, gonna get after it. We have the COO here, make sure we don't get lost. And uh, we're crunched on time because Eddie decided to take forever. So we, uh, we're gonna get in there, we're gonna move, we're gonna get after it. So subscribe. And I'll see you at the bottom of the hill, Eddie. Just wrapped up one. This hill is deceiving because it starts at a really steep incline down there and then right past Chris, it flattens out and then it climbs right again. Alright, so 
we just wrapped up that run uh, came out at around four and a quarter mileage. Um, the sprints were good. That's a little bit about that hill. Like I said before, it kind of starts, flattens out, starts really up again, then flattens out. So it's kind of hard to get like a consistent two minutes of hill sprints for the first five by two, five by two minutes. Um, so what I did was I'd pretty much go all out for that minute 30 until it, it capped out at that flat part, turned around, came right back down, um, finish up four and a quarter for today. I think tomorrow we have five to 10. So mileage is kind of starting to pick up a little bit. This was, like I said, this is our first sandwich workout or, um, interval workout of the week. So, uh, I'm excited to, uh, keep pushing and, uh, go home, get some food. We're starting to, uh, prioritize the diet a little bit more. Um, we just posted on Instagram looking for a nutritionist to help join the Leadville team so we can start getting that dialed in a little bit more. Um, but uh, all in all, good workout today at the gym, good workout here, and uh, like I said, I'm excited to keep pushing. Couldn't keep up. Huh? Couldn't keep up today. I was in front the entire time. Okay. That's, I don't know where the hell I'm going here. <laughs>